Hello, my name is Adam. I am a MCAT tutor and MCAT specialist here at Chamassian Academic Consulting. And today I'm going to be walking you guys through a CARS passage from the MCAT. So to just give you a start about where are we in the exam, remember the exam is four sections. We got chemistry and physics, CARS, which is critical analysis and reasoning section, which is basically just reading, and then lunch break. Then we have our last two sections, biology, biochemistry, and then finishing up with psychology and sociology as the final and fourth section. So again, this is in the second section, so we just finished the 95 minute chemistry and physics section. We got a break, and now we're in for the 90 minute CARS section. Okay, so a little bit of an overview about a strategy towards the CARS section. There's a lot of different strategies. The most basic strategy is to answer the passages one through nine. There's nine passages in 10 minutes each. So you kind of want to aim for 10 minutes per passage. Um, when you're practicing, you might want to go a little bit faster than that, maybe nine minutes or eight minutes, so that when you get into the actual pressure environment of the actual test day, um, you can perform a little bit slower than you normally would and even give yourself a little bit extra time. Also, if you're able to finish each passage in nine minutes or eight minutes in normal practice, you have some time left over at the end. If you're able to do nine minutes per passage, you have about nine minutes left over at the end where you can go back and you can review if there were any questions that you were kind of, you know, caught on and you flagged it and you just put your best guess but you want to revisit it, you'll have a little bit of time to do that. So yeah, that's what we're kind of shooting for. So what I'm going to walk you guys through here on this passage that I have pulled up is the strategy where we highlight as we go and we kind of build a little summary with highlighting and then we answer the questions. But I'm adding a little twist this time. If you want to see that just that pure strategy, there should be a previous video of just that pure car strategy. But the twist for this one is we're going to actually read the questions first to get a gist for what we're looking for in the passage so we don't kind of get bored and lost with the passage, but we have an idea of what we're going to look for by just looking at the question stems first, not looking at the answer choices, but just the stems for what we're looking for in the passage. This is a strategy that um, is very popular. A lot of people like to have an idea for what they're looking for. and. Um, it works for a lot of people, so go ahead and try this strategy on your own, um, but I'm going to model it here quickly. So before I even look at this passage, I'm going to go over to these questions, and we're going to pick up some key words that we're going to look for. So one, question number one, based on paragraph three, right, so right away, that's a key word, we're going to look in paragraph three, which of the following words most nearly means distemper? Okay, so that's, we're looking for the meaning of distemper in paragraph three. All right, we're not going to look at the answer choices yet. Question number two, from the passage, one can reasonably infer that, okay, we know nothing from this question about what we're looking for. Nothing in the stem that will help us figure out what's going on, so we're just going to move on for the sake of time. Question three, which of the following statements, if true, most challenges the author's assumption? Okay, so we're, we need to know, in order to answer this question, what the author assumes, right? So, I mean, that's not new. We have to do that for every passage that we read in cars, but we're looking also, important to note, we're looking for the opposite of what the author assumes in this passage. Okay, number four, the passage offers no information about the authors. Okay, so this is going to be three of them are true and one of them is not, right? So we're, again, another opposite, looking for something that has no support in the passage. And then five, what does the passage suggest about the nobility? Okay, so we're going to look for what does the nobility of the city, what are they, what do they do, slash something about the nobility, something we're going to look for in the passage. And then number six, this passage would be most likely to be found in a what. Right, so where would we find this passage? It's found in something. Um, so like what does this kind of passage read most like? And we can kind of see what those answer choices are when we get back to the questions later on. Okay, let's go through the questions then here, or go through the passage and then attack these questions. All right, it was about the beginning of September 1664 that I heard an ordinary discourse that the plague was returned again in Holland. All right, so this is reading like a narrative, right? Because it's used the word I, and he's talking about plague, so it sounds like it's gonna be more of a story. 
It had been very violent there, and particularly at Amsterdam and Rotterdam in the year 1863, whither they say it was brought, some said from Italy, others from the Levant, among some goods which were being which were brought home by their Turkey fleet. Okay, so interesting timeline. We don't always need to highlight this, but it's interesting that he's talking about the beginning of September 1664, which like right, September is later in the year. Um, and then also talking about in 1663 was when he first heard about this plague. So in 1664, it has returned again, but in 1663, he's talking about kind of where it began. Um, and it's like, seems like it's not, not a consensus, so we're not going to highlight anything there, but it seems to be from different places. Um, seems that the government had a true account of it and that several councils were held about ways to prevent its coming over. Okay, so the government knows, but all was kept very private, but okay, but didn't tell anybody. So we'll, let's highlight that. So government knows, so we'll say government true, but kept very private, right? So the government knew, but didn't tell anybody. I mean, we don't know about why yet, but that seems to be a thing. People began to forget it as a thing. We were very little concerned in till the latter end of November or the beginning of December 1664, so we're almost in 1665, when two men said to be Frenchmen died of the plague at the upper end of Jury Lane. Okay, so somebody died. So they kind of forgot about it. I guess we'll say, we'll just highlight the word forget um, till December 1664, so almost 1665. All right. So we kind of got this idea of this plague. Um, it's started in um, 1663, but now it's come and come back because the government kind of hid the information about it. Now it's come back and it killed some people. So let's see what goes on with this story from now on. The family they were in endeavored to conceal it. So we're seeing this con concealing thing again. Conceal it as much as possible. But at it, as it had gotten some vent in the discourse of the neighborhoods, so people were talking about it, secretaries of state got knowledge of it, concerning themselves to inquire about it in order to be certain of the truth. Right, so interesting, we got this secretaries of state, which seems like government people, um, wanting to know the truth again. Two physicians and a surgeon were ordered to go to the house and make inspection. This they did, and finding evident tokens of the sickness upon both the bodies that were dead, they gave their opinions publicly that they died of the plague. Okay? So they're confirming plague. Again, the government's figuring out that truth. We'll see if we see any questions about that. The people showed a great concern at this and began to be alarmed all over the town. And the more because in the last week of December 1664, another man died in the same house and of the same distemper. Okay, remember, this is from one of our questions. This is the question one, distemper. So um, people are dying of it, right? So he died of the distemper. Kind of seems like a synonym for the word plague or disease or illness or something. Like that. We're going to look for something along those lines. And then we were easy again for about six weeks with none having died with any marks of infection. It was said the distemper was gone. Okay, so they're using distemper again. It seems like it's synonymous with plague, illness, disease, right? Because we're talking about infection and they mentioned plague in the first paragraph. But after that, another died in another house, but in the same parish in the same manner. It began to be suspected that the plague was among the people at the, that end of the town, though they had taken care to keep it as much from the knowledge of public as possible. Okay, so here's, I'm thinking that this is, this they is either referring to the secretaries of state or the government. It's kind of implied that, because, or it could also just be, uh, it's unsure, it's not, it's not totally defined there, but the only people who have been hiding things, right, keep it as much, from the knowledge, right? So from the public. So we just don't want people to know. The only people that have been mentioned to do that up to this point was the government. The Secretary of State didn't really do it, but they wanted to know what was true. So this they must be referring to the government or Secretaries of State there. All right, let's go on. I lived midway between Aldgate Church and the Whitechapel Bars on the north side of the street as the distemper. So we're seeing the word distemper again. Um, but again, this this question one is paragraph three. So this is the next paragraph, but it does seem like it's used the same way again. Illness, plague, disease, yada, yada. 
had not reached to that side of our city, our neighborhood continued very easy. But at the other end of their town, their consternation was very great. Okay, so they're upset. The richer sort of people, especially the nobility, okay, remember that's one of our keywords, and gentry from the west part of the city thronged out of town, okay, so they left with their families and servants in an unusual manner. Indeed, nothing was to be seen but wagons and carts with goods, women, servants, children, coaches filled with people of the better sort and horsemen attending them and all hurrying away. So they all left. Then empty wagons and carts appeared and spare horses with servants who, it was apparent, were returning or sent from the countries to fetch more people. So the rich people run away, or the nobility. So when we get to that nobility question, we're going to look for something about that they ran away. Um, this was a very terrible and melancholy thing to see. So that's interesting. His opinion is that it's terrible. And as it was a sight which I could not look on from morning to night, it filled me with some serious thoughts of the misery that was coming upon the city. So he's very sad. So he's talking about his own thoughts now. It's very interesting. And the unhappy condition of those that would be left in it. Okay, so who would be left? Probably the poor people. Un happy condition of those left in it. At least within this context, we have nobility and then we're presuming non-nobility is the people who didn't leave. I now began to consider seriously with myself considering my own case and how I should dispose of myself. Oh gosh. Oh, I think that probably means given the way that this language is coming along that dispose of myself is like, what should I do with myself? Like, should I leave or not? That's kind of probably what that means. Oh, that is to say, whether I should resolve to stay in London or shut up my house and flee. So he answered it himself there, whether he should stay or leave, as many of my neighbors did. I have set this particular down so fully because I know not, but it may be of moment to those who come after me if they come to be brought to the same distress. Okay, so it's like, oh, maybe I should leave because if people get upset, they might want to come with me. Therefore, I desire this account may pass with them, rather for a direction to themselves to act by than a history of my acting, seeing it may not be of one farthing value to them to know what, beca what became of me. Okay. It's like people might not care, but he writes this so people might care. So interesting that I'm going to highlight this for why he's writing this. I desire this account, just in case we get a question about why. I had two important things before me. One was carrying on my business and shop, which was considerable, and in which was embarrassed all my effect in the words. The other was the preservation of my life in so dismal a calamity as I saw apparently was coming upon the whole city. Okay, so he's just kind of sharing his inner dialogue here, but his two important things are his business and his life, which it seems like he's deciding business, that's stay, my life, that's leave. Um, as I saw, apparently was coming to the whole city. I was a single man, but I had a family of servants whom I kept at my business. I had a house, shop, and warehouses filled with goods. So, he, I mean, if he has a house, shop, and warehouses filled with goods, he's probably, he's not nobility, but he's at least well enough off he could probably leave. To leave them had been to hazard the loss not only of my trade, but of my goods, and indeed of all I had in the world. Okay, so he's, he's deciding, do I leave or not leave? leaving, he leaves behind all of his stuff and his career. Okay, so this is a very narrative-like passage. Um, let's see how these questions go, but I think we picked up all of the keywords that we looked for in the questions there. All right, question one. Based on paragraph three, which of the following words most ne nearly means December? Okay, we can pretty quickly answer this because we clued ourselves to this question, but we're looking for illness, plague, disease, yada, yada, disposition, cause, disease, resentment disease is pretty directly from that. Um, so that one's pretty straightforward. That's got to be C. All right, two, from the passage, one can reasonably infer that A, the city lacked a middle class. Maybe. There's no mention of it, so they, they could lack it. Um, I would hope you would probably want something in the passage to suggest that, like either talking about not having a middle class, but there isn't really seem to be a mention of it. There's the people who left, nobility, and there's the people who are going to stay, which may be some nobility, but also maybe people who just can't leave. There was some mention of that in in the middle paragraphs, either three or four. But let's that doesn't seem to be a great answer. Let's move on. B. 
the author did not have the means to leave town. Okay, we know that that's not true because he's considering leaving for a good solid two paragraphs. The plague was new to Europe. Okay, we know that's not true. From the first paragraph, right, we have the plague returned again. Right, it had come in 1663 and it had come back. So it's not new. The government sought to prevent mass hysteria. Um, we seem to have some evidence for that. Right? We have this first paragraph, they kept it private, so that's our first piece of evidence. Then we have this they in the third paragraph trying to keep it from the public. That also seems, that they seems to be government. We don't know that for sure, but this one definitely is government. Government tried to keep it very private. So D is at least true with that, and maybe even has two pieces of evidence, so D is a good answer. We're going to go with D for number two. How about number three here? Which of the following statements, if true, most challenges the author's assumptions? Okay. So we got to find the one that's not true. Or not, try not to find the one that's in line, but one, the one that's against it. Okay. Those who fled the city were more likely to die from the plague. Um, that would be interesting, right? Because it seems like the people who left were trying to survive. So if the ones who fled were more likely to die, that would be kind of challenging. So we'll keep that one. The plague did not kill everyone who got it. Um, I'm not sure if that's challenging because I'm not sure if he mentioned whether or not getting the plague meant you died from it. He's only really talking about people dying from it, not necessarily people getting it and not dying it, or that everyone who got it died from it. So this, I, I don't, know, don't know if we have support for that statement for or against, so I'm not going to lean towards that one. And see, the plague was not brought from Italy. Um, I remember from this paragraph, the first paragraph, that they mentioned Italy, but also that it could have come from other places. Um, so, you know, I don't think that would be that big of a deal if that if it was not brought from Italy. I don't think the author would care that much, so we'll take that one out. And then D, international commerce was negatively affected by the plague. I mean, I, I think that the author would probably assume that. Um, that doesn't seem to be against his argument at all. Um, a seems the most opposite. Right, D, he does say that it's kind of a big deal and it causes a lot of disruption and people moving and stuff that would probably in, impact international commerce. So B, C, and D are not good answers. A seems to be the best answer there. How about number four here? The passage offers no information about the author's what? Okay, so marital status, okay, last paragraph, we know that he's a single man. And A's out. Upbringing. Uh, I don't think we know anything about where he came from or his parents slash his childhood. C, so we'll, we'll keep that one. That one seems to be the front runner. C, occupation. Okay, we know a good amount. He has a business, a shop, warehouses. So definitely, we don't know the specifics of what he does at his business and shop, but we do know he has one, so we know something. Motivations. Okay, we know a lot about his motivations. He spent almost two entire paragraphs discussing his motivations and thoughts about whether he should leave or stay. So, n not D. We're definitely going to go with B there. We, we don't have any, any discussion of upbringing in the passage. All right, number five here. What does the passage suggest about the nobility? Okay, remember, the only mention of nobility is in this fourth paragraph here and that they ran away. That's all we got. So A, they did not care about their servants. Uh, maybe they cared, maybe they didn't care. They brought some of them, they left some others. So there's maybe a little bit of evidence about that one. They had the resources to leave town, um, undoubtedly. So it would be pretty difficult to refute B. A is kind of a maybe. It seems like they maybe care or maybe don't care, so probably not the best answer. B, straight up, that's almost in line, w exactly in line with what we read before and kind of how we answered the question before we even got to it. But let's make sure C and D are wrong. They were well connected with the local government? Probably, but that's not really what we were talking about in the passage. And they were more fearful about the plague than others? We, we don't know that. They definitely did something about it, but others may have been more fearful but then just weren't able to leave. So B, they had the resources to leave town. Very difficult to refute that, so we're going we're gonna to go with B there. And then number six here, this passage would most, li most likely be found in a what? Okay, so we have to kind of have a little bit of an understanding about what these types of books are. And this is like kind of, we would probably call this a reasoning beyond the text question, right? There's those three types of questions on the 
AMC cars section. Um, so we have to kind of use our outside knowledge a little bit, which people say cars has no outside knowledge. There's a little bit, right? These reasoning beyond the text, you have to kind of have a little bit of an understanding of what these things are, um, even though not you don't have, to have an in-depth understanding. So a like a history book, maybe scholarly journal, maybe a historical scholarly journal, maybe autobiography. I mean, it reads exactly like someone writing their own story. So maybe newspaper article, maybe this could be just like a story in a newspaper article. So these are all maybes. So what we need to do here, which is actually like fairly common for a, a reasoning beyond the text question like this, is we need to figure out what is kind of irrefutable, like would it definitely be that. So history book often has like third person things. This is more of like a first person. This would be like a primary source, like for a history book. History books don't usually contain primary sources, right? They're usually more like kind of overview statements, le less primary sources until you get like in some really advanced history where you only look at primary sources. So not a great answer for just generally history books. And scholarly journal, even though it could be in like a group of primary sources for like a historical scholarly journal, there are also are a lot of kinds of scholarly journals that would never include this, right? Like a, like a scientific scholarly journal, um, there would be no reason to have this in a scientific scholarly journal. This would be very qualitative and not quantitative at all. Um, so uh, even less likely to be in that type of a journal. Autobiography. It's pretty difficult to say that this wouldn't be an autobiography, right? That's that's probably the biggest support for why this is this is a good answer because it's clearly someone talking in first person. Right? We see the words "I." He's talking about his thought process all the time, and they're talking about their own life, right? So autobiography. So it's hard to say that this would be wrong. So probably gonna go with this one. And then newspaper article, same reason. There's other things in newspaper articles besides just first person opinions about their own life. A lot of times in newspaper articles, people are talking about what other people are doing too. It's even when you do have first persons like editorials in newspapers, they're usually talking in first person about their opinion about something else, not necessarily about their own life. So C is probably a little bit better. D is not a great answer, even though these are all possibilities. You know, certain types of parts of history books, certain scholarly journals, and certain newspaper articles are possible, but it is very difficult to say that this wouldn't be an autobiography. Um, so yeah, that's going to be our best answer there. Um, and that's the Cars passage. So yeah, if you want to do more practice kind of similar to this, there is a link in the description that um, will give you a question of the day. So you can sign up for that and get a question every day sent to your email inbox, which you can get at least one question of practice done every day from our email. Um, and yeah, good luck with your studying and I'll, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.